Good afternoon and thanks for joining us right on here on Midday Kentucky. I'm sorry I, I coughed and talked at the same time then. Don't do that. I didn't mean to, <laughs> it just happened. And in fact, a, an old colleague of mine um, who's a news presenter in Utah who I used to work with on one of the morning shows, there was a post on Facebook maybe about 10 days ago and he was reading this hard hitting news story and then he, he, he coughed but then couldn't stop. And then I, th I was thinking to myself, geez, that would be really embarrassing if that happened. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Jinx it people, does. jinxed myself. Hey, everyone, today we'd like to continue our celebration of Black History Month with a look at prominent black groups and figures that played a key role in the US military. In 1942, President Roosevelt passed a presidential directive that gave African Americans the opportunity to be recruited into the United States Marines. Those recruited were sent to traditional boot camps. Instead, African Americans were trained at Monteford Point, North Carolina giving them the name Monoford Point Marines, the first African-American Marines. Oh. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. And a very impressive woman here, Lillian E. Fishburn, was appointed by President Clinton and became the first African-American woman to hold the title Rear Admiral. After gaining the ti that title, Fishburn was the highest ranking African-American woman in the U.S. Navy. She retired from the Navy in 2001. Wow. And last, we'd like to highlight Colonel Guion S. Bluford Jr., an Air Force fighter pilot who flew combat missions in the Vietnam War. After the war, he worked for NASA as an astronaut between 1983 and 1992. Bluford participated in four shuttle flights and became the first African American to reach space during the Orbiter Challenge mission. Nice to I hear. I know. Pretty oh, cool dude, huh? Oh, big difference in his look. He's got gray hair now. Look at him. <laughs> um, how are we all? Doing great. We good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. doing good. Yeah, How are good. you doing? How was your Valentine's Day? Who's my wife? How was your Valentine's Day? What did you think? I told you what I was doing <laughs> yesterday. In front I of showed the a video. <laughs> I was like, that's Aww. what I do. No. <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> you know, no. I literally, I had to be honest with you, I was going to go out with some friends and I fell asleep on the lounge. Oh, did you really? Yeah, and that truth. was it? That yeah. was your night? Wow. I, I fell asleep at like 6.30. Well, you should feel very refreshed today. And no, ready to go. because you know when you have one of those little cat naps for like an hour and a half on the lounge and you wake up and you're, you're, you're a little groggy still and then you eat something and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it was one of those. Good. All right. So Katie, how was your Valentine's it Day? Was I was fun. curious. I just stayed in because, uh, you know, i got to go to bed early. But yeah. um, we're going to Asheville this weekend for belated oh, celebrations. Nice. But it was fun. I really like Korean barbecue. So, yeah. man Who? friend... Korean barbecue. Oh, yes, I saw dish. that video. And so um, he whipped that up. It was good. Nice. Fun. Good, good, good. good Madam. Oh. You were the same because you dug's up so early. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of the same situation. But we did. We were able to uh, get some takeout, of course. <laughs> I wasn't going to be cooking. Did but, you tip uh, on the takeout? Remember we were talking about that? You know what? <laughs> Doug picked it up, and I didn't ask him. Did we he need tip? to ask. Doug, did you tip? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay, <laughs> Texas Doug. I'm sure you're watching. <laughs> hey, everyone, very quick roundup of the Olympics. Norway has dethroned Germany for a total of 17 medals, of course. Oh, wow. Six gold, seven silver, and four bronze. Germany now in second place for a total of 15 medals and of course Canada in third US move back down to fifth place everyone wow. and I'm sorry Australia was still in 12th place Aww. look we'll get back there for the Summer Olympics don't you worry about mm -hmm. that I'm not worried about it <laughs> <laughs> every night when I'm watching the Olympics I think just win something, will you? Anything. So I can just say we got another medal. <laughs> hey, um, this is an interesting topic, and I wanted to bring this up, but let me give you a little bit of background to begin with. Black Panther comes roaring into theatres today, and along with it comes merchandise and costumes for adults and children alike. But as thousands of parents prepare to take their children to see the film, some white parents have been left wondering about how to approach the subject of race. White parents are trying to make sure they are not culturally appropriating when they take their children to see Black Panthers over the weekend. Especially if those children want to dress up like the main character, superhero, aka the Black Panther. Some parents are worried that allowing their children to wear the Black Panther mask or costumes could be considered cultural appropriation or even blackface meeting cultural appropriation. Okay. Uh, I. Think Are this we is too ridiculous. deep? Yes, it's a 
awesome, cool costume. Why would my kid not want to wear that? I mean, really. I agree. I mean, yeah. honestly. And yes, we're going. We already have our tickets reserved and everything. We, we already bought them. We're ready to go on Sunday. To, oh, to you are? Yeah, we're going to go. My kids want to see Do you it have completely. to pre buy? What um, am I doing? Why did I know that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, we did. I mean, you don't have to, but you risk not getting a seat once, it's once you get online. Typical of my life. So, yeah, yeah. but we, we already have the tickets lined up, ready to go. Yeah, they want to see it. I want to see it. I love, you know, anything with the Marvel um, superheroes. Okay. You know, I look, think that's really and I good. asked both of you, what does cultural appropriation mean? Even, look, I even looked it up. Do you know what I mean? So I was a little unsure. Let me read it to you because you both sort of knew what it meant but you weren't quite sure how to explain, explain it. it. Yeah. Cultural appropriation, often framed as cultural misappropriation, is a concept in sociology dealing with the adaption of the elements of a minority culture by members of the dominant culture. It is distinguished from equal cultural exchange due to the presence of a colonial element and imbalance of power. Here's the thing. Kids aren't born racist, people and kids aren't born seeing black and white. Right. It's the parents that are putting those words into the children's mouth mm -hmm. of saying maybe this is blackface or mm -hmm. maybe this is a racist thing to do. And <coughs> I'm, I'm really getting tired of it. Yeah. Because this show, this movie that's about to come out has been all over the world and they say black films don't carry overseas. Well, this one certainly is. And mm -hmm. they're saying that this is going to be the number one film of all time. Right. Okay. And the actors and the actresses that are involved, Katie, are just amazing. Mm -hmm. The story is great mm -hmm. of what I know mm -hmm. of not understanding Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. So I want to see the movie, yeah. but I also wouldn't have an issue. Would I be judged if I decided to wear the Black Panther costume as a white man going to an event now? Is well, that basically what I, I kind of just think saying? this is stupid. Like, <laughs> there's totally a, agree. It, there's yeah. it seems obvious what the line is between going in blackface right. and going in the costume. Yeah. And like we said, children don't see color. Mm -hmm. So um, black children, white children, Chinese children all dress up as all the superheroes, I'm sure. Exactly. So to now bring it to your child's attention that maybe you don't want them dressing up as mm -hmm. Black Panther because of the race, that is putting that in their head. I think, I think all so children, I they don't see color and you shouldn't point it out to exactly. them. Like, costumes are fun. And you know, yeah, and their costumes, they're completely exactly. covered, so it doesn't matter what color the child is underneath the costume. That's the beauty of these superheroes, is that they're, they're not conformed to any culture whatsoever. It's well, a, it's, I, I, I think they know. are in the past. Right, do you well, know what I mean? the comic like, books do, yes. but when kids are looking at these costumes and when they put them on, they feel like Spider-Man, or they, yeah. you know what I mean? They feel like Batman. It doesn't matter what color your skin is. It doesn't, none of that matters. It's just the I beauty of being time, a comic character. Unfortunately, with things that have happened over the last few years, I thought we were moving forward quite a bit. Yeah. But, you know, obviously when we see things like this, it isn't really yeah, moving I never forward even, as fast as what I thought it was. I never even thought about it. Um, I just, it's Miss weird. Katie, let, tell us what you think. Head over to our Midday yeah. Kentucky Facebook page. And you know, we've put this story up there. Tell us whether you think the story is just too far that way or whether you agree with us as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie, we're talking about dogs. <laughs> we are. Yeah, <laughs> I saw this blog online. This is a frequent topic, I, I think, among one? my friends. No, I think we all agree that you, you are not a dog person yeah. or really any animals. You should <laughs> not get one. <laughs> but do you think people who are dog owners are parents? So this woman was saying that she gets really frustrated with her friends calling their dogs her fur babies and right. referring to herself as a parent. She also pointed out celebrities, she said, being too dramatic in divorces of what happens to the dog. Yeah. And she said the dog is happy no matter what, if it's still with the owner and treated well. She said it's trivializing a child that gets stuck in divorce, mm -hmm. and that's a human suffering. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't mind people saying fur are babies. Saying, no, hold on, are you saying dogs? They're kind of putting them at the same She's status level. She's saying they're the That's same as children. Okay. She's saying they're the same as children. She's frustrated by her friends doing that. I don't know. I think that the term fur babies, that doesn't bother me because I think most people use that sort of tongue in cheek. Oh, right. my fur baby. But I don't think that dogs are equivalent to children. I think right. they are a family member and very important. But right. I'm not really bothered by people acting that way because maybe mm -hmm. I, I don't have children. But I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Look, you know, I'd, <laughs> Each to their own. If you want to dress up your goldfish, go for it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, really right. don't yeah care. I think I think people go a little over the top about their fur babies and all of that. But 
but you know the thing is is that they really do become a member of your family and and you know I think about our dog that we have we have a puppy right now that we're getting to know and getting to love and all of that but we had a dog if it before. Stops pooping all over the house. <laughs> it's not pooping in my house. Doug said it was. No, it's not. Just <laughs> Did he once not? or twice maybe, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um but you know our other dog that we had for 12 years, I mean you know, we were devastated when she died. I mean, it, you know, we do felt yeah. like we lost a member of our family when she died. I mean, it mm. was very difficult for us. But, um, you know, the thing is, is that your children obviously are the most important thing. And I think you're right. I think people do go a little, I, I understand this bloggers, you know, kind of like, you it, know, they're going a little crazy. Does this have children? Uh, so she, she, has children. she has children. She's yeah. saying she'll have friends that call themselves parents yeah. and think their dogs are well, children. I, I have a colleague back home in Australia that um, decided she would never have children. She just recently also got married mm -hmm. and she had a snake to be, and she took that darn snake everywhere. Oh, did she it really? It was just so embarrassing. <laughs> and now she has, she'd bring it to the salon. It was just. <laughs> well, I have a lot of friends. But now she has a dog yeah. and now she's the same. Is she? She's got this dog all over town. I think like, it's nice though. I think, I think it, it is. I think, I nice to have that connection. I know. I'm glad. You know, I have a lot of friends that have chosen not to have children, yeah. and they do have animals. A lot of them are animal lovers, and they've really in in you know indulged their lives into taking care of these animals, adopting them, uh, you know, getting them from rescues, things like that. Yeah. So I really I love that about people when they do have that passion and that concern for All right. animals. Yeah. Well, I speaking think so too. of passion, how long does it actually last, people? <laughs> yeah, this was interesting. I saw a study online talking about relationships and how long passion um, lasts within uh -huh. the relationship. They say love can last forever, but the passion, yeah. uh, what do you think it says? Oh, well, as you know, I don't <laughs> read your stories, so I'm thinking a year? Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, I think uh, it probably may be a couple years, but I think, you know, it comes and goes, too, in a relationship. Okay. Yeah. Um, this um, author argues the passion lasts two to three years, and then oh. after that, um, you just, if you don't have that foundation already, mm -hmm. just built on love. But what is the foundation, though? Friendship. Yeah. Support, okay. love is what yeah. they're saying, the love for the other person. Yeah. And, and she's saying passion is kind of different. Yeah. I think passion can be many things. It can be mental, it can be physical. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't yeah, all kind be. of encompass. But that's what yeah. passion is, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But they're saying that fades. What do you think? But yeah, what do you no, do it does. after it fades? Move on? No, no. No. I mean, it's, you know, the, the passion part is, you I know, just normally call the housekeeper and say, get the bags packed. The passion is what kind of brings you together, you know? It's yeah. kind of what brings you together. But then it's it turns into, you know, the love just keeps growing stronger and stronger each year. People say that, and it's, you know, and I, it, it sounds kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. But it's really true. You really do fall in love over and over all the time. You fall, because there are challenges, dif, you know, marriage is difficult at best, and, it's, and you have to work at it. And so there's times where things are going good and you're just like, you, you're seeing all the good in the relationship, and then there's times where you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> get this person away from me. And I'm sure Doug has felt that way about me many, many times. I think he did, but he told me the dog was pooping on the house. <laughs> 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 That's because he's the pooper scooper. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> tell us what you think. Head over to Midday Kentucky's Facebook page. And well, you know, tell us some of your thoughts and whether you think how long passion has actually gone in your life as well. Yeah. Everyone, you've been watching Midday Kentucky. We'll be right back after this short break.